promised, here is the full interview and the role play um, discussion that I had with my mentor, Amanda Curtin, L-I-C-S-W. You can find her on Instagram and I'll put her link to the Instagram in the description of this video. We're gonna, you'll see the role plays again and you'll also see our discussion on these issues as two therapists practicing the RRP model of therapy. I hope you enjoy it. From a long time ago, you kind of, this is probably still true, but I don't know if you've expanded on it. When you were discussing like the inner child stuff, like there is the present loving adult, then mm -hmm. there's like the apathetic adult. Mm -hmm. And then there's the inner child who is just kind of innocent and loving. Mm -hmm. And then there's the really judgmental, distrusting inner child. Mm -hmm. You know, does that formula still kind of work in your mind? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, <clears throat> I think I would probably, um, I probably would would say that it's it's probably broader than I think. There's a that there are many dysfunctional parent ways to to parent dysfunctionally. So it may not be just a judgmental parent. It it could be all kinds of ways that that we don't show up for our inner child. Sure. And, and the the inner child, I think, is there's the child that is that is actually our true self you know, and then the one that we were born with. And then there's the child that had to cope in all kinds of dysfunctional ways to survive. Right. Beautiful. Right. And about that adult is just thinking about like working my own work on myself or what my clients struggle with is when a client is dialoguing or you read their dialogues or whatever. And it's like, that's where you really start to see that they're the parenting style, like the trauma parenting style. Yes. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's way too enabling. Yes. Sometimes it's way too um, kind of cold and distant. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's no, yeah. hi, how are you? <laughs> there's just like, tell me what happened Tuesday, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, all kinds of stuff that kind of mm -hmm. pops up and just like in the way that, you know, and there, there's just also like um, people overthinking it or something like that. Mm -hmm. Know, like what what do you sometimes see too the the biggest thing that i see is that the adult uh colludes with the child yes and um That's and then the really there question. really is just the child running you which is not not going to be helpful right. in the present yeah the way that the inner child kind of shows up is it's 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 fascinating how every client is different sometimes the inner child is just like where you've been my whole life. This is amazing. You know, like then there's really that heart-based instant kind of connection. Mm -hmm. you know, there's still going to need to be relationship building after that. Um, but then there's just kind of the um, really skeptical inner child, do you know? Mm -hmm. what I mean? And mm -hmm. then like what for the, for the, this video, what I wanted to kind of do is to, to kind of figure out how to do a role play yeah. in, in my mind. And I, you know, I will see clients be the really colluding, enabling yeah. Or even the kind of um, punching bag adult. Yep, absolutely. And that really needs help with like firm limits and really kind of what I do I'm, in my mind. It's just, and I'm still working through this. It's just I think that when the inner child is really projecting, like you're bad. I don't like adults. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You can't keep a plant mm -hmm. alive. What do you? Don't gonna, tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do. That kind of stuff. And then the adult being like, you're right, I can't yeah. keep the plant alive. You know what I yeah. mean? That kind of a thing. Yeah. It's really whatever the child learned to do, that's what comes up strongly whenever you challenge anything in the present that they're worried about, that, that goes against that behavior. So uh, they're fine. You can live your life and your child is fine. And then you start to think about doing something that you couldn't do as a kid. That's when it'll come up. The child will come up really strongly and and mm. do whatever it is they learn to do in that situation. It could be shut down. It could be get angry. It could be anything, really. But yeah. that's that's what I witness. Can you give me an example? Let's say that uh, that I want to finally say something to my partner that's real. I've been upset about something for a while. And it really makes me nervous, but I know that I really need to do it. I've been working on myself and I start to think about doing it. And the child comes up and says, no way, no way. We're not doing that because if we do that, he's going to get really mad. And I can't tolerate people getting really mad at me or he might go away and, and leave me. 
um, or it's not going to make any difference. Why do you even bother? It, yeah. It's just going to make things feel awful. You know, there, there could be a million reactions. And the adult will... will We're just being awful. sensitive about the teasing yeah. that he does. It's right, no right. Either. That's you another one. That's a, that's a really another one. So right. the child will never emotionally want to do a new behavior that wasn't okay to do growing up. So the adult has to be able to be strong enough because they're in your body, right? They're they're emotionally reacting. And you have to be able to step back and still do the new behavior, even though your insides are in such turmoil. Right. And resisting. Totally get it. We're so on the same page. I had a really, really bright client who was an MSW student in one of my groups. They were saying it's like, oh, it's like if if I'm if I'm the adult driving the car. You know what I mean? Like in the inner child is in the passenger seat. I want to go left and the inner child's going right. Yep. Like that, yep. there, there's that conflict, that kind of yep. split, you yep. know, where it's like, do I ask for a raise? You know, the mm-hmm. adult can do that, but the kid is terrified. Yeah. Or set because the, they're still, the, the, they believe the world is the same as it was growing up. Yep. And if that's true, they should do what they did in yep. the past. But the world is not the same. And we are adults now. We have power. Mm -hmm. Uh, But one of the reasons I love the role play is that I'm doing many more of them now than I used to. Dialoguing is such a powerful tool and it's, and I certainly believe in it, but watching a role play brings it to life, especially in group. People can really benefit from watching a role play. Yeah. Right. So in the, in the, in the problem that we've just kind of talked about the adult knowing to go left and the inner child Mm -hmm. going right that you know to do a role play like that do you want to try one about that sure it's not hard for me ever to do role plays with people in my groups mm-hmm. because i know them so well yeah and so i know their inner children and i know their adults yeah. it's harder for me if i don't know the person so we're, we're doing this role play kind of making up a, a situation yeah. so right. we'll, we'll see how it goes i i, I don't okay. i've never really done that so we'll see so just that thing about like sort of bringing up partner teases them and they're okay. a, a people pleaser or struggle with codependency. Okay. okay. They're trying to work on setting limits and setting boundaries, but it's yeah. just like, I, I have this analogy that I, with clients, I say like, I'm asking you to kind of jump into a pool when you don't know how to swim. Yeah. Like, yeah. like that's how scary it is. That's how scary. So, yeah. and, the, and the problem yeah. is, is like the, the adult is trying, but they overly agree with the inner child's mm-hmm. childhood yeah. perception of the issue. And the emotion. It's the emotion, I think, that really grabs hold of the adult. Okay. You know, it's fear, yeah. it's shame, it's despair, it's all of these. And, and of course, there are beliefs attached to it. You're right. Mm-hmm. You know, we, uh, we will be um, bad if we do this. You know, we'll get abandoned. Um, mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. nice to say hard things, whatever it is, whatever the beliefs are. Um, but I guess both are powerful. You're right. Got it. Uh, who plays who? Well, you know, I was thinking about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to do it a little backwards. I will have them play the child, pure child. Yeah. I would, and I'm the good adult. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think in this situation, it might be better to do to first show that collusion, you know, and and yes. how. Um, so uh, I'm happy to be, you know, a, a, a child if you want to. Okay, sure. Model that. Okay. Okay, so I'm adult Amanda, you're little Amanda. <laughs> and then I'm going to try to parent you around uh, setting a boundary or a preference. With your partner? Is that the one we're going to do? Or Yeah, like the, the partner teases us or something like that. And it's, okay. it's I know it's confusing, but to get gender off the table, it can be any kind of partner, any kind of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> okay, so I'm adult Amanda, you're little Amanda. <laughs> And then I'm going to try to parent you around uh, setting a boundary or a preference. So little Amanda, I need to say something to our partner because. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, no. That, that is not a good idea. That, yeah. I'm starting to feel pretty, up, pretty anxious inside. Okay. Well, can I can I just maybe tell you why or just to you know like it it's I don't I just don't I don't want it I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. It, okay. does, it doesn't feel good. Okay. Just, well, 
Do you have an idea when we could talk about it? Just some other time. Some yes. Okay, some other time. All right. Um, can I maybe even ask you how you felt about it last night? No, I, I don't. I don't like it. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, I'll maybe I'll ask the therapist about what. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay, right out of the gate, the big no. <laughs> really quick, effective role play. <laughs> it was quick. They often go longer because what what happens is sometimes group members will try to poach the uh, the person who's doing the role play um, and. It, it still doesn't work usually. <laughs> and there's, you know, I wish we could show more strategies. Like there's, there's just so many ways that the child shows up to protest and, um, yes. and they're, and they're all really powerful. Let's do one at least where we can model how to, how to parent that child. Right. That would be the next step. Yeah. That's, that's the next part step. One where it's dysfunctional. Yeah. yeah. The adult yeah. is, like yeah. we run, there's not really much of an adult fully present because the adult is kind of really caretaking or catering to the inner child's yeah. resistance, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. And and many clients will be like, well, well, yeah, the inner child doesn't want to talk to you. So don't be an abusive adult, you know? And they kind of might get a little, get it a little bit askew. Do you want to try it again where I'm more of a, do you want why to- don't you, Why don't you be the kid? And this time I'll, okay. I'll parent you. And one thing I want to say too, that's a great point, um, Patrick, because our our inner children were so intruded on in such a negative way when when there was a limit or some, or some kind of uh, confrontation, it wasn't um, for the child's good. Yes. And it was, it was often abusive. Right. Or, or neglectful. So they don't have an experience of a strong parent being there for them in a way that's really positive. Yes. And the I find that and this was true for me as well. I find that when we're trying to be that healthy inner adult, we also have a skewed idea about what's healthy and what's not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't want to yeah. be like my abusive dad and right. steal control my inner child. So I'm just going to back off and let them come to me. Yes. That's yeah. not how actual parenting works. Do you know what right. I mean? But I can. Because we're so invalidated. Them. Yeah, we were so invalidated that we don't want to, and we don't want our kids to think that we're invalidating their experience, but we have to because they're projecting. So anyway, we'll do it. Yeah. Let's, okay. And so be, be your toughest kid. Okay. Toughest kid. Okay. Toughest kid. Got it. All right. So, uh, little Patrick, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to talk to my partner about some behaviors that have really bothered me recently. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't. I don't like this conversation. I'm not yeah. talking. I'm not talking yeah. to you. Yeah. And I, you know what? I totally get why you're doing that. Of course, you don't want to talk to me. No, I don't. And you I don't, know. You don't get I know. What was it like for you when you were little to try to talk to your parent about something hard? Well, no, I, I, I'm, I want to talk about not saying anything to our partner because they're going to be really pissed at us. We don't say things right. We're going to we're gonna botch it up and it's going to create a big, big fight that we're going to have to stay in for a long time. And, mm -hmm. and that's just stupid. If we do that, it's stupid. Yeah. And it's, you know, I'm so glad you're telling me all this. It's really, really important. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know that what happens with me and my partner is my responsibility. And what I want to do is figure out what it was like for you when that happened to you as a kid. But yeah, if that's your, I don't, you're not good at this stuff. Mm -hmm. If it's your responsibility, you're not good at this. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you'll, you'll, you know, you can't even I, get a parking ticket. They're, you're not going to. I totally, totally get that. And, and, you know, I'm learning, I'm definitely learning in a process of learning, but before we talk about that, because that's kind of adult stuff, you're just a little kid who's having some feelings about, what it's like to try to say something to somebody that you care about, but who has all the power. What did you learn about that with mom and dad? Well, you're just like mom and dad, because you just said I was a little kid and I don't matter. Mm. I said you were a little kid. I didn't say you didn't matter. You totally matter to me. You're my little, you're my little boy. I love you. I totally love you. And what I am so upset about is that as a little kid, 
you didn't get the experience of both watching adults have an argument and work things out and get closer, nor did anybody, could you say your truth to anybody, how you felt about their behavior, how they were treating you, any of that. You never could. Mm -hmm. And that breaks my heart. Mm. And that's so wrong. I know you didn't have the experience of it, so you don't really know what's possible. What you experienced is really bad parenting. Okay. That's nice, but I don't, I still don't. I don't, feel I don't think it was nice, Patrick. I think it was really, really hurtful. And it it took you to a place where you had to decide to to put all that truth away and to not feel those feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of leaving your body, you go into your head, you know, you shut down that, all that. And you were so smart to do that. Really smart. Mm -hmm. Because when you have people who have power and they're either going to punish you or shame you or make you feel wrong when you speak your truth, mm. you got to shut it down. Yeah. Okay. So what do we do though? Mm. You know, because this is really, really scary. You know, all the feelings that came up when, you, when I was talking about talking to my partner, mm -hmm. all those feelings are the feelings you shoved down because they weren't safe. Oh, okay. It's what I call the well of pain. Mm -hmm. There's a lot in there. Yeah. And there's also a well of truth. Mm. And so go ahead. Well, do you mean the times that dad would hit me if I didn't get a good grade and I couldn't tell him about my report card? And Yes. Yes. I mean, we, we probably could make a long list of all the times that happened to you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of being focused on the present right now, right? What we're going to do is we're going to bring dad in for a minute. Okay. And I'm going to say something to him. Okay. On your, on your behalf. Okay. I know that that sounds really scary, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to do a thing. Okay. okay. And even if, if it's too scary for you to watch, what I want you to do is just, you can remove yourself, go into another room and watch it on TV. Okay. Okay. So just see how you feel. You also can say, um, Amanda, stop. I mean, sorry, Big Patrick, stop. Uh, um, <laughs> and um, I need help. I'm too scared. Okay. But I promise you, I will not let him hurt you. Mm -hmm. And if he talks, I will shut him up. So okay. tell me if he starts talking, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. So Patrick's dad, you are here because I'm going to talk to you about the dad you were to little Patrick. And you are not allowed to say one word. You are not allowed to get up and move at all. And if you do, I will have police come in and restrain you. And if I have to, to put something over your mouth, I will do that. You are to listen to me right now because I am livid about how you treated this little boy. This was your son, your precious son. And you were a bully and abusive. Shame on you. Shame on you. You disgust me. And you made it so that Patrick thought he was the problem and that he had to hide things from you. He couldn't tell you <clears throat> the truth about something like his grades. A dad is supposed to be safe and supposed to celebrate the grades that are great and also help you with grades that aren't and, and help you not to feel stupid or bad. Sometimes it's hard to learn. Sometimes there may be something he needs help with. And you were so scary. And I really hate you for that. 
And now I'm going to ask you to leave. But Big Patrick, I think he's going to get me after. Well, you can talk to him like that, but then I'm going to hear about it. He could when you were a kid. Absolutely, he could get you. And that's why you didn't do it. That's why you were smart not to do it. Mm -hmm. But see, I'm in control now. You live with me. I have all the power. You don't live with him anymore. Mm -hmm. You're in my heart, and I carry you wherever I go. That's nice. It's really nice for me. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. He was terrifying. I know. I know. He and really I, was. I liked how you talked to him, you know, but I think that that's why I really get scared about upsetting people. I know. I and I and I totally get that. You know, my heart goes out to you. You would have to feel that way when I think about talking to my partner. But what I want you to know is that I'm going to do it. And I promise you, it will be different. And I want to ask you a couple of questions. How is my partner different than our father? Well, he doesn't hit. Yeah, that's big. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? Um, he, he, it's... And sometimes it's like, I think he's going to care, but he doesn't care about things, you know, like about dishes or whatever. <laughs> you know? like, sometimes I don't believe him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I always think he's, I, you know, but I, I guess I always think he's going to lash out at any time, but he never does. Yeah. But there's always that fear, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. and so and that's because of dad. That's mm -hmm. because that was your experience, right? Yeah. right. Um, right. And so the reason that I really want you to see me get upset with him about some behaviors I don't really like mm -hmm. is because I want you to see that I can do that safely now. Mm -hmm. That I can actually say to him, you know, it kind of bothers me that you tease me in a certain way. It hurts mm -hmm. my feelings. And yeah. I really would like you to try to stop that. And to see that there's a way that there, there are men in this world that actually can take that in and hear what I'm saying, own that they do that, and to say they're willing to work on it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you'll believe me that that's true unless you see it. Mm. And I, I wouldn't, if I were you, believe me without seeing it. I, yeah, it's confusing because he's really chill and fun. Yeah, he like is. He never gets yeah. mad the way, you know, so. Part of why I picked him. Mm -hmm. I wanted somebody different than dad. I was pretty careful. About it. But at the same time, you can see that I'm still scared to say things to him. Yeah. And that's because of our childhood. Yeah. So for me to be able to say something is going to be a big deal. And a little hard, mm -hmm. but I know I'm safe to do it. And I want you to see it. I want to do it for you, too. Okay. Okay. I really hate the teasing. I do, too. But yeah. then I feel like I'm just being a pain in the ass. No, you're not. You know, that's. I love that you can be in touch with I hate the teasing. Because that's what you couldn't be in touch with as a little boy, as a little boy to be able to say, it doesn't feel good to me. Yeah. I want that to stop. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. And that wasn't possible. All that had to get suppressed. But now you can pay attention to that and say, hmm, that, I don't like that. And I can actually say something about it. Yeah, it's just confusing, though. I know. And when I get confused, then I just put it away. And that's why I don't want you to have to do this. And, and it's not your job to do it. You're not an adult. This is an adult relationship. So I'm ready. I've done a lot of work on myself. And even though I'm a little nervous, um, I, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is watch. All right. All right. Deal? Good luck. Okay. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah. That was, that was really good. good. It, 
I forgot how, you know, when I work with clients, I'll do an empty chair, not in the middle of a role play so that, you know what I mean? I've forgotten that. Like, that's really cool. I'll do it in another context. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's really powerful to speak to the person's abusive parent. Yeah. Yeah. And really- the reason I do that is, is because I don't want the child's feelings to not get released. So maybe I, maybe I go talk to my partner and have, you know, a conversation, but all this feeling that came up is going to go back down again. If I don't release it toward the dad. Absolutely. Right. Or have them hit the bag or something like that, yeah. you know, but it's really yeah. with that, you know, speaking on behalf of the child is really powerful because even in the role play, my heart was like gushing and it's just like, Oh, he's going to be pissed or like, you know, mm-hmm. like sort of like an abusive parent is really, and clients never hear that from extended family or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm disgusted with the way that you treat your kids kind of a thing. So, and I, and I use powerful language and initially it's hard for, for people to hear that, you know, to say, I hate you, you're yeah. a monster. You should, you know, all of that stuff. The reason I say it is because it's in the child, those feelings and thoughts are in the child and I don't want them shamed. And I would, and I'm not doing it to a real person. I'm doing right. it in a real play. Yeah. Right. Cause it's that thing when we're, we're both, when, when we're all six or seven years old, hiding in a closet, yeah. listening to mom and dad fight, we just feel like, Oh, I hate you. I know. But then mm-hmm. it goes away. No, even I want you to die. Yeah. And then you feel bad. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's that's- just, yeah. So, so that's, Partly what has to happen too in a role play is, is some kind of release. Yeah. And that's a good point. Like that's, you know, like where, when we're kids, I think like, I wish you would just leave us alone or die or something like that. Then I think that that's the legacy of the abusive parent that they've been so damaging that those are the feelings that they elicit in their own children. Yes. But then their children become ashamed of themselves. Like, Oh, I want my dad to die. Like, it's just like, it's just some mind F, you know? Yes. And, and, you know, you think about it in a healthy family, if let's say it's a parent sets the limit and the kid goes, I hate you, mom, for setting that limit. A good mom goes, yeah, you do right now. Yeah. You know, right. I just set a limit and you're really mad at me, but yeah. that's okay. I still love you. And, you know, you're just angry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And don't get into a power struggle or a shame. Or how could you possibly say that about me? I'm such a good mom. and Or the bad kid to say that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that was really cool. Like I, I wanted to maybe address another type of reparenting problem is when, so that was a role play in two ways about how the parent in the first round will really cave in yep. to the inner child's trauma feelings or trauma beliefs. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You know, yep. let's not ask for a raise right now. Maybe we'll talk about this again in three months. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Mm-hmm. Let's not set the boundary or let's not whatever. Yeah. Uh, or let's not say no to Thanksgiving because we'll be mm-hmm. not the person if we do that. Then the way that we did it you know, was really with an empowered, you know, really loving parent mm-hmm. that did a couple things. You took over the task from the child. Yes. Let me handle this. Yes. While validating their trauma, you know, putting the perpetrator in their place. And really educating the child on, of course, we're like this. This was our truth. Yes. Kind of a thing. And gradually. And I, and I shifted it from what happens often with, with these dialogues is it stays focused on the present and it becomes a battle about the present. Yes. And I very quickly will bring it back. Absolutely. That's the key to this stuff. And some kids um, are really persistent. <laughs> Right. That's why I think in the initial thing, I was like, no, we're not doing that. Or when you asked me, what yeah. does it take you back to? I detoured that and made it to be about the present. Yes. Yeah. So it's what we, what we, even couples fighting want to do that. Yeah. You know, as opposed to looking at their childhood trauma. But I had another kind of thought in there of, yes, it takes a really, it takes a long time for clients to get their inner adult in shape. Mm-hmm. And even just coming to therapy, coming to the group that kind of stuff is mm-hmm. helpful to kind of build them up. I almost say it's like a little bit like a boot camp. Yes. It, it takes a, that's a whole process of building up that healthy, yes. inner, firm, but loving adult. But it's, um, it, it takes, it takes, it's a long road to get to how you modeled it. 
Yes, and that's one of the things I I have really come to. You know, I'm always learning in this in this work, and I I can see now that I need to do more modeling of that. That's why these role plays are so powerful. Because I can say to someone, be a, you know, be a healthy adult. They don't have a clue what that looks like. Right. So if I can't model it, and and you know, I can again talk about being it, but if I don't really model it and show it in a relationship with a child, how can I expect them to learn it? Right. Right. Well, could we maybe do another role play about another problem that I see of um, when the inner child is really skeptical, critical, and judgmental of the parent? Uh, yeah, and what I'm, what my my theory working around it is a little bit like it's like a self hate cycle. Mm-hmm. If they're the same person, so I, I don't know. Could you speak to that? Yeah, or, yeah. Or, or, well, I mean, the way that, the way that I would see it is that the child gets triggered and puts the well on the on the parent part because they're safe. That's right. And also, yeah, it, it avoids dealing with those scary parents. And um and it it's because the child really believes, you know, you know how when you're triggered, you can't really uh, assess the person accurately. Oh the yeah. child the child, you know that in, in what? what's that magical? I know. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe from time to time that happens. Yeah. To you. Um, but uh, but the, so when the child triggered, you actually they think you are the parent, just like the parent. They miss all the things that you've done that show that you're not. Yes, you know, like so. So for the viewer, if the if the inner adult says, "Little Patrick, we're going to ask for a raise tomorrow," and I wanted to talk to you about what comes up around that. And then the judgmental, critical, untrusting inner child is it's just coming from their abuse around adults. It's also that the person is so much safer yep. to say that to than to actually say that to their own sort of actions. Yes. And there's there's a, probably another scenario too where it's the child being critical of the way the adult is. Like you're such a wimp. Yeah, that's you the self hate thing. Yeah, you never, up, you never stand up, you never stand up for yourself. Or yes. Um, you said you dialogue with me and you didn't do it. You no. never do. Yeah. Right. Can't keep a plant alive. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I you love know. that one. <laughs> Can't keep a plant alive. Got invited to a party and then you just stayed home in Oreos and watched Netflix. <laughs> like, you, yeah, right. you know, we, we were supposed to be social, but it, there's kind of a paradox in that, that it's, it's a little bit like the inner child holding all the trauma beliefs is what makes the person stay up till 3 a.m., Mm-hmm. watching Netflix and Oreos. Do you know what I mean? Like really kind of letting themselves go. But then the paradox of the the inner child blaming the adult for that, you know, yes. is, is that a little bit too cerebral? Well, no, no, no. But I, I would just say that I don't think it's the, I don't want to make it sound like the child's the problem because they're not. It's, no, it's, I don't mean, I don't mean to either. I'm just saying it's just like, so it's just, it's yeah. how, it's how I was when I was 15 years old. It's just almost like the derailing ourselves Mm-hmm. It's just seeing if an adult is going to show up. Yes. But yes. the paradox, when an adult kind of does try to show up, then they get that, all that. Then they get blasted. Yeah. Then yeah. they get, yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's do another role play, like maybe about asking for a raise. Okay. And like, maybe we'll do it two ways where as the inner adult, how about, can you play the inner child and really blast me? Absolutely. And, I, and I'll be the inner adult that is not really on good, solid ground. Like, I don't okay. know, because I, I I wonder is, and in the second round when we do it, is there kind of um, the inner adult becoming like kind of an authority figure? Like, it's not okay if you speak to me like that. Is any of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we, like, I'd love I'm to not mom that. and dad. Yes. yes. Not fair. Absolutely. I'm doing all this yes. therapy work. You're talking about learning how to set a healthy limit. And that's really hard, really right. hard for people to do with their inner child. Yes. Right. And I see this as a major problem. I call it kind of clearing the air. Yeah. Let's be real with it. You know, like we're, we're the same person. We had a horrible childhood, but I'm just learning, but you really beat me up. Mm-hmm. We're not going to, you know what I mean? About really being real and clearing the air. But anyway. Maybe just to do the, a role play where you... You be the kid beating me up and I'll, I'll stand up to it. 
Yeah, but how I really want to do it two ways. Oh, okay, okay, where, sure. Where the, where the person just caves in. You know, you can't even. Oh, keep oh okay. Oh, okay. Sure. Plan a lot. Like, oh yeah, you're right, and you know, like. Okay. That, yeah. That's okay. Thing. How about you be the kid? You beat me up, and I'm like the passive adult that just okay. takes because of shame or not wanting. Okay. to You know, okay. I think coming back to the other role play is I think that the my clients struggle to set limits because they don't want to be like their parents who ruin limits. That's right. Little Amanda, we're gonna, we're all Amanda. <laughs> Little Amanda, we're overworked and underpaid. And I scheduled a meeting a couple weeks ago. And I think I'm gonna ask for a raise tomorrow. And I wanna check in with you about. You're not gonna do it. You never do it. You always say you're gonna do it and you never do it. You're such a loser. Oh, you're, well, I know, I know I have a bad track record of doing it but i thought that maybe look at you you can't even get it out you can't even you can't even say it you can't say it how are you going to do it with your boss you're terrified of him well i just thought you i know i know you're right i maybe i should you're such a loser what do you think what do you think we should do because i scheduled <laughs> i scheduled the meeting i mean i just i'm so sick of all these things that you get yourself into. It's kind of embarrassing. Just cancel yeah. the meeting. Cancel the meeting. I just, oh, I just, what's wrong with you? You don't, you don't think I'm ready? Really? Are you kidding me? Yeah, well, what do you, well, we are, we're really overworked, you know, and I thought that maybe I could just try to see if, I mean, I would just feel so much better if we were just actually. You're going to go in there. You're going to say it. And he's just going to blast you and you'll go out with your tail between your legs and be just another defeat. I, I don't want to go through it. I'm sorry. I'm just done okay. with that. All right. Well, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll rethink things. Okay. Thanks for, for dialoguing with me. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> You have to have humor about this, by the way. Oh, I know, I know. It's, it's not going to work. And you have to kind of keep on track about who's who. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I like that you threw in some losers here and there, because that's really like the sentiment about that. But just, you know, is the inner child feeling that about themselves as well? I think it's a way to avoid feeling that, even though they do. When you project, yeah. you're basically taking it off of you, but you don't really ever do that. The loser is still inside. Right. And the paradox, they're, they're the same person, you know? Yes. And and it's probably also a modeling of, this is all about power, right? In terms of families. And sure. so it's really like, uh, I'm going to choose being my dad because he had some power. I'm not going to be the wimp mom. Wow. Right. <laughs> right. Cool. Well, do you want to do it another, the, the other way? And sure. Want, sure. Let's, I'll be the, the, I'll be the inner child. Okay. All right. And you're like the firm. You get to get really nasty with me, Patrick. All right. All right. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> you're a mentor. After all that, you're going to be nasty. Okay. <laughs> you're not. You're, it's just a role play. It's cool. Okay. Little Patrick, I just wanted to let you know, because I always like to talk to you about what's going on. Um, I'm going to talk to my boss and get a raise. Oh, fucking really bullshit. Deserve it. You're not going to know. You're not going to do that. You know, you're horrible at that. Mm -hmm. You bomb every conversation, whether it's the person at start. No, I'm going to, I'm going to stop Patrick. I'm going to stop you right now because how you're talking to me is not okay. You have, you're, I'm fine with you saying how you feel, but I do not want you to talk to me the way you are. I'll talk to you however I want to talk to you. You're not actually, actually, no, no, that's not okay. And I know that you're having really strong feelings and that you saw your dad, when he had strong feelings, be abusive in his language. But that's not okay with me. And yeah, it's, not who, it. it's not he who you are. his point across, though, right? Not in, a good, not in a way that I would ever want to be around. There's a way to talk about feelings that's respectful of the person who's talking and respectful of the person you're talking to. So no swearing. No calling me any names, but you can tell me what you're feeling. Okay, fine. I will. 
I don't trust that you can do a lot of things. I don't, you can't. How does that make you feel when, when you, when you're not feeling trust for me? But how does that feel? What's a feeling word? Insecure. Mm -hmm. Anxious. Yeah. Oh, do you feel at all angry? Yeah. 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 Yeah, you feel angry. Yeah, and and insecure and a little bit anxious, right? Those are really important feelings. And I want to know how you feel because you're really important to me. So it's it's really good that you're telling me this because then I know what's really going on inside. Yeah, but I don't buy any of this. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, you know. You know what you just did? Funny, the fact no, I'm not going to have you finish because you're going into your head right now. And you're trying to talk to me about, about something that, that it's really hard. It's really hard to stay with the feelings. And you just did something really big. And I want to stay with that for a minute. You just told me how you feel. And you did it in a really respectful way. I'm really proud of you. Okay. That was really, that was really brave and new. How did, how was that for you? Weird. Yeah. Right. Very new and different. Weird. New stuff always feels a little weird. Yeah. Anything else? Did it feel, did, was there any place in you where it felt good? A little, but there's a, there's a point I need to get across to you. Okay. Can you do it in a respectful way? Yes, I'm trying to do that. Okay, great. It's a, problem, it's a problem I have with you. Okay. And that you're telling me all these nice things when I feel like you're pretending to be a, a good adult when you're mm -hmm. really not one. Mm -hmm. So that's, to me, that is... You're kind of shaming me, saying me saying I'm not a good adult. Um, there, there, are, there are things that you can say you don't like, specific things that you can tell me, and I hope you do tell me that that, that you may not like. But um, I also want you to see what I do right, so we can balance it. Because I think I do some things right, and I'm sure I'm, I'm do some things that you don't like. Well, yeah, you don't. You never fill up the gas tank. You always leave it hovering around empty. Mm -hmm. You now, just is that, to get it together and plan. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's really important. I, I'm glad that you're telling me that bothers you um, because that's important to me. And that's something I can, that's a behavior I can change. Okay. So, thank you for telling me. Sure. Yeah. What else? Well, are you going to go to the gas station today and fix that? Absolutely. Yep. Well, let me think about it because I want to be I want to be honest when I can. I probably can do it tomorrow because I, I have a lot of meetings today, so I, I can do it tomorrow. All right. <laughs> What's coming up for you? Um, I just I'm struggling with this. I I you know. I guess I just don't like being parented. Of course you don't. Of course you don't. It's not anything that was positive in your life. <laughs> Parenting was really awful. And so what you learned to do was run your own show. And again, very smart, really saved your life. Um, the problem is kids need parents because they're born not knowing a lot of stuff. And so when you're when you don't have that kind of help, it sets you up for a lot of trouble in life. And yes, you get independent, but we know we've had a lot of issues around our life and trying to manage it in ways that work. And that goes right back to not having good resources as parents. And so, again, don't believe me that... Um, there are good parents that the parenting can be really helpful for you. Um, but I'm going to show you and you can see how that goes. Okay. okay. I guess I'm just so used to doing things on my own that this I know, is. I know. I know. It's 
you know, it it also keeps us really from getting other resources in our life. You know how we haven't really asked for help very much from other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there are actually really good people in our life now that could actually help us and be there for us. Feel really hard mm-hmm. because when you've years and years and years of having either no parenting or bad parenting, it leaves you with a sense that there is no help and you have to be on your own. And we're social beings and we need help. As kids so need help to be able to be okay. Okay. And you know how much help we give our own children now because we know how important it is. So now yeah. you get to have that. Sure. This is nice, but how do I trust you? You don't. Like, oh. You don't. Not until yeah. I earn it. Not until I earn it. Trust is always earned. And so what you have to do is really look at specific ways I'm either untrustworthy to you or trustworthy to you. And we'll see where I come out. I think I'm pretty good trustworthy, but I have, you know, some things that I have to work on, like filling up the gas tank. But filling up the gas tank is not as big an issue as some of the issues you had to deal with with your father and with your mother. Mm. Can you see the difference? Um, being well, hit, I, like like let's say being hit when when he hit you, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or when he verbally abused you, or when your mom ignored it all. That's a little bit different than forgetting to fill up the gas tank. I'm not saying it's not an issue that I'm going to address, but it's different. Well, yeah, it's that's hugely different, you know, but. I think that I could never trust him because sometimes he'd crack a joke the next day. Yeah. See, that's, um, you know, you're so smart as a kid. <laughs> you really are. I love that about you. Um, you always come up with exactly what we should talk about. Um, because what happens with dysfunctional families is it's bad most of the time, but once in a while it's okay, which makes you never trust the okay. Mm-hmm. In a, in a functional family, it's pretty good most of the time. And every once in a while, there's a problem. So you kind of, yeah, I know, isn't that astounding? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And so it's a whole different experience of things that are difficult. When mm-hmm. you're, when, you, when mostly things are okay and something comes along that isn't okay, it's not as big a deal because you got a lot of okay. Okay. And you can trust the okay because there's enough of it so you can trust it. If it's only a little bit of okay mm-hmm. and there's a lot not, you're not going to trust it. No. Nope. And you were smart not to. Yeah. And I think that that's why I hated him so much, you know, because like one day he'd be hitting me and then the next day he'd be like, you know, well, you got basketball practice tomorrow. And it'd be like this, like, you're going to be this parent now, you know, so it was just. Yeah. So. I can see that you're very different than him, but. I'm so glad you can see that, Patrick. I'm so glad. Yeah. Well, okay. cool. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> and really kind of really helpful because it's in a way I really loved that when I started getting verbally abusive, you were like, we're not going to do that. And I find that whether it's actual couples, mm-hmm. that that really sets a tone of, You've both got my attention, and now you've both kind of got my respect. Yes. Which is a fairly funny thing to me, because I think many trauma survivors, we just equate standing up for ourselves or asserting ourselves as being abusive, because that modeling was so off. That's right. You know, and you were, you know, in a way, you really were so great about it, because you kind of then got my attention in a way that you weren't pissed off about the gas tank right because you could have gone oh come on but you know what i mean like i go to therapy you know what i mean i got the <laughs> job i got the 401k plan you know like i'm never abusive to you i you know whatever i'm fall you could have gone to a little bit of a self-righteous place yeah but and the reason i didn't was because i want you to have some success too i want you to see that you affect me and that your truth matters right it's not just like, no, that's wrong, you right. know, but is there also 
a way to do it that isn't with that energy. Like, mm-hmm. could you could you have said, you know, like, well, little Patrick, I want you, you know, do you can you come up with a couple of ideas about how I'm different? Mm-hmm. That would be great. I struggle yeah. with that. Yeah. Then you could have said, well, I go to therapy, and mom and dad never went to therapy. Yes. Yes. I'm learning from about parenting from self help books, that kind of a thing. Do yes. you know what I mean? Like I'm paying That's step like, number two in the one, two, three, you know, yes. that we use it. Right. And I think that sometimes I'll make a game out of it. I'll say one thing and you say one thing and we'll go right. back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been a great idea. Yeah. Right. To kind of like, yes. So, you know, and then exactly where I would have gone, well, you know, you do always kind of go to the grocery store at the right time and you provide those things or you know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah don't like violent movies the way my dad would or whatever, you know, just yeah. some concrete things. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And you don't shame me, you know, you don't hit me. I mean, that's a big one. You don't hit me. Right. Yeah. Right. So cool. Cause it is helpful for me. Cause in the way that I've been sort of doing it was really around clearing the air was really assert yourself for the inner child and say all those things up front. But mm-hmm. I love how you were like, can you get out of your head and tell me how you feel when I don't fill the gas tank? Yeah. Yeah. So cool. So great to do this with you. Yeah. Really, really fun. What other cut off the top of your head? Like, you know, I think like, like forming this video is I really just want to be highlighting some problems Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. the role plays are excellent. We've got the kind of passive or colluding kind of adult And then we have the inner child that really projects and gives the adult Mm -hmm. a hard time. And then that can, that adult can either cave in or learn how to really Mm -hmm. kind of be gentle, but also be kind of reality checking kind Mm -hmm. of, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the despairing child is a hard one, the hopeless child, the ashamed child, uh, it might be interesting even just to ask people to send in scenarios if they're interested, you know, of, yeah, that'd be a cool uh, idea. Like what, what they struggle with. Yeah. In my mind, I think that the general public, if they're into the inner child stuff, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't go further than like, Oh, my inner child doesn't like my aunt Betty. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My inner child wants pizza today. Right. And you know what I mean? Like the way that right. we're doing it, you and I are like, just I like see the inner child work as just simply a vehicle for working between different parts of our brain, prefrontal mm-hmm. cortex, and limbic system, mm-hmm. you know, like that kind of a thing. So I think to ask the general public, I mean, for people that, what would they, what are they struggling with their inner child? I don't know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the people that follow you because they're pretty. They're, oh, they're, sure. They're more right. savvy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They would, they would probably have, you know, like whether it's like, I don't, you know, so yes, the despairing inner child. I find if there's a really despairing inner child, it's really hard to get an adult in place. Yeah. But it's like the gravity of that pain. Yeah. It's really hard to kind of get their adult a little bit awakened and that kind of, that's why group is helpful. Mm-hmm. The shamed inner child. What would be an example of that? The child is, is so terrified that if people get to know him or her, they'll see how bad they really are. Sure. And might that an inner child kind of like go totally underground when, it, when it's someone starts a dialogue? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes they're really right out there just saying, you know, um, I feel so bad about myself. And um, yeah. but I think, you know, shame often is is you try to hide it. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Cool. So that was the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like this video, feel free to hit some buttons on the screen. You can't miss with any of buttons, specifically the like and the subscribe button. And if you're interested in checking out my monthly healing community membership, just go right to this white ball up here. We meet twice a month for live Q&A sessions with me. You get weekly journal prompts about inner child work, and you also get all access to all my coursework. And it's always may you be filled with loving kindness, may you be well, may you be peaceful entities, and may you be joyous and I will see you next time.